Welcome back to Microbiology Lab. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video we're going to discuss some aspects of Exercise 5, and those are going to be spread plates and streaking for isolation. We'll do the latter first. So let's talk about streaking for isolation. So streaking for isolation is one way to dilute a very concentrated sample of bacteria so we can generate what are called small isolated colonies. All right, so any experiment that we need to run, uh, so for example, the biochemical tests that we'll do after the midterm, normally are gonna require small isolated colonies, um, at least a lot of them will. And these are gonna be very useful in a clinical microbiology lab. Um, this, this cell colony that's boxed in red, that's an example of a small isolated colony. It's not one cell, it's one colony. It's probably millions of cells. I don't know how many it is, it's a lot but it's an isolated colony. We would not use this region over here, certainly. Um, this is just a big smear. And then this one over here up in the top is probably too big. This is a good small isolated colony that we could use. All right, the reason we want to use these small isolated colonies, let me fix the spelling, is because a small isolated colony is most likely to represent one species. There could be a bunch of species of bacteria here, but it's not saying that these small isolated colonies are only one species, they're just most likely to represent one. Okay, they're the purest of probably anything that's on here. And we want pure colonies. If we were to use a sample from this concentrated region over here, we would probably have a mixed or contaminated colony, and we can't have that. The pure colonies are vital for effective species identification, which is what we're gonna be doing in the practicum week at the very end of this semester. And again, one way we can isolate and purify species is by streaking for isolation. So let's now go to a different view, and I'm going to show you how you streak for isolation because you can get very mechanical at it, but to understand it, you really have to see it first. All right. Now I'm going to show you how to streak for isolation on a plate. And what we're going to be using in class is going to be a TSA plate. So this is a TSA plate. Notice I have it divided into four quadrants. And you don't actually have to draw those on your plate, but it can be useful if it helps you and also for thinking about what goes in each quadrant. I've also got a lit touchomatic burner here that I'm going to use for sterilization. I've got a stock solution of a bacteria right here in a broth form. And then the mouse you see is going to be representative of my inoculating loop. All right. So the thing to remember here that can be very important, and some people forget this sometime, you're only going to dip your inoculating loop in the stock one time. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put my loop in the flame, sterilize it, make sure it's good and germ-free, take it out, let it sit for like 10 seconds. Um, that's golden rule for letting it cool down enough. Then I'm gonna dip it into the stock solution. I'm gonna dip it into the stock solution. That's the only time I'm gonna dip it in here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to streak in a zigzag fashion in one of these quadrants like that, okay? Now, that's the only time I ever was going to dip my inoculating loop in the stock. So I no longer need this stock. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over here. Accidentally got part of the circle there, but I think you get the idea. So I don't need that anymore. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, I'm going to stick my loop in the, in the flame, sterilize it again, okay, sterilize my loop in the flame. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually drag my loop through a small portion of what, where I streaked on the previous quadrant. So I'm gonna drag it through probably like right here and then zigzag in the next quadrant. So let me just drag it through. You don't wanna drag it through a big part. You only wanna drag it through a small part. So maybe like right here and then zigzag in the next quadrant, okay? Something like that. Then, as you may have guessed, I'm gonna put the loop back in the flame like this, and put the loop back in the flame. Sterilize like that, and then wait 10 seconds, make sure it's cool enough, and then I'm gonna do the same thing I did here except starting in the second quadrant. I'm gonna drag my loop through a small part of the previous quadrant, so maybe like right through here, and then zigzag in the third quadrant, okay, like that. And then 
I'm going to stick my loop back in the flame, sterilize it, take it out, wait 10 seconds so it's cool enough, and then do the same thing. I'm going to drag the loop through one small part of the previous quadrant, right this, and then zigzag, and then you're done. Okay? Now, after doing this, all four quadrants should have bacteria in it. But the question is, why did I go through the trouble of, of doing it four separate times and sterilizing between each one and so on and so forth? All right. So in red right here, which is the first quadrant, so that red, that represents the first quadrant, okay? That should actually be the most concentrated with bacteria. Whenever this grows in the incubator, you should see the most bacteria in this quadrant because I had sterilized it and then I took it directly out of the stock culture. So of course, this is going to be the highest. And then I sterilized it again, and then I did this blue streak in the second quadrant. This should actually be the second most concentrated, but it'll be more dilute than the red. Because the reason I dragged it through a small part of the red was to take some of the cells with. I'm taking some of the cells with, but not all of them. Just a few of them, and then I'm going to streak them here. So two is going to be more dilute than one. Okay. And then I did the same thing. I sterilized my loop again and did this purple one. So this is going to be uh, the third most concentrated or the second most dilute. So it's getting increasingly diluted as we go down. And so what I do is, again, after I sterilize, I drag the loop through a small part of, of these in blue because I don't want to take all of the blue. I just want to take a small part of them. And then that distributes those cells here, right, in purple. So three is getting more dilute. And then the most dilute is four. That's my most dilute. So I sterilize my loop, and then I take a small part of this purple with. These are already pretty diluted, but I'm going to take a small amount of that and then spread it into this fourth quadrant, okay? So if I were to incubate this for the appropriate amount of time, then I should have a ton of cells here that are, that are all clustered together, it'd be useless here. But by the time I go around here and, and get to the green region, I may have isolated colonies. And for the, everything we do from here on out, what we want are isolated colonies. So they're these little uh, white normally or tan colored circles or just very small uh, particles that you would be able to scoop off with an inoculating loop and perhaps transfer into a broth. So you only want these. These are small isolated colonies. They're not individual cells, they're way too big. They're small isolated colonies of cells and that's all you want. If you had something say in this red region that just looked like this, which you actually will see, you'll have things that look like this, that's not an isolated colony, that's probably hundreds or thousands of colonies, and you shouldn't take from these if you, if you can avoid it. If you have small isolated colonies, you want to take the cells from these uh, for future experiments. So this is a schematic of how you actually streak for isolation, and then you'll see you'll get these isolated colonies. Now let's switch back to the PowerPoint. And again, going back to this, we see here that we have a small isolated colony box in red. And this would be over here the area probably in the fourth quadrant. Over here, you can see here this is the first quadrant. Here's the second smear. Here's the second. Here's the third. And then up here is the fourth. Okay, And that's why these are the most dilute here, but the most concentrated over here. So hopefully you understand that now after watching the, the diagram. All right, now let's talk about spread plate dilutions. All right. So, if we were to have an original stock solution, so the stock solution is always going to be very concentrated with bacteria. If we were to simply plate a stock solution, the bacteria from it, on a TSA plate, it would be so concentrated that we would never find a single isolated colony. So remember when we were talking about this previously for streaking for isolation, we want single isolated colonies or small isolated colonies. If we just plated the original very concentrated stock broth or the original inoculum, we would never get those colonies. So what we need to do is we need to do what are called serial dilutions. We need to just repetitively dilute. So let's say we take one milliliter, which is just a unit of volume, out of the original stock broth, the original inoculum, and put it in here, and then fill it up to 10 milliliters. 
Okay. Well, that would mean we'd have one milliliter of the original concentrated broth and nine milliliters of probably just water. Okay, that's what we diluted it with. Now, this solution in this test tube is one-tenth of the concentration of this. It's only 10% of the concentration of the original stock. Okay, so in other words, its dilution factor is one to 10, or that's, it's one-tenth of the original concentration. Even if we were to plate this, it would still be way too concentrated. You don't see any small isolated colonies here. So let's do the same thing again. Let's take one milliliter from this and put it in here and then fill it up to 10 mils. Well now, this is gonna be one-tenth the concentration of this. So one-tenth times one-tenth, it's actually a hundredth of the concentration of the original broth. And we can keep doing this. Let's take one mil from this put it in here and then fill it up to 10 mils. Now we have something that's one thousandth of the original concentration. Let's now take one mil from this, put it in here, fill it up to 10 mils. Now we have something that's one ten thousandth of the original concentration. And let's just do it one more time. Take one milliliter from this, put it in here, fill it up to 10 mils. Now we have something that is one one hundred thousandth of the concentration of the original stock. So basically what's happening is each one of these is one-tenth as dilute as the previous one. So we go from one-tenth to one-hundredth, one-thousandth, one-ten-thousandth to one-one-hundred-thousandth, okay? And you can even see that as we plate these, the, the plates are getting increasingly more dilute until finally you get to these last two, which are actually really good, both of them, that we actually, you can see these small isolated colonies here, very similar to what we wanted in the streak plates um, that we covered previously, okay? Now, one thing you can be asked about spread plates is you can be asked, given a plate, such as this right here, given the number of bacterial colonies on the plate, and given the dilution factor, you can actually be asked to calculate how many colony forming units, or the concentration, what is the concentration or the number of colony forming units in the original broth? And the way you actually determine that is you're given a plate, let's say it's this plate. You count the number of bacteria on that plate. Now in this example, there's 32 colonies of bacteria on this plate. 32 colonies. You can even pause it and count these up. So you take the number of bacterial colonies per plate and you multiply by the dilution factor. The dilution factor in this case is 10,000 because it's one ten thousandth as concentrated as the original stock. So this number is your dilution factor. So you would multiply 32 times 10,000 and the concentration of bacterial colonies would be 320,000 bacterial colonies per milliliter in the original sample, okay? Now this says bacteria, just keep in mind it's bacterial colonies. There's way more bacterial cells than this because each colony contains millions of cells, but that's not the point. This is 320,000 colonies per milliliter in the original sample, or it's 320,000 colony forming units per milliliter in the original sample, okay? Let's do an actual example problem now. Let me actually delete this right there. All right, so we have a situation where we've counted 45 colonies of bacteria. They were counted on a plate made with a one to 100,000 dilution, okay? Calculate the number of colony forming units, which is the same thing as colonies per milliliter in the original stock broth. Okay, and remember our formula, we have the number of bacterial colonies per plate times the dilution factor, and that will give us the concentration of the bacteria. All right, so what is our number of bacterial colonies per plate? Well, it's 45 colonies on that plate. Our dilution factor is uh, 1 to 100,000, so we multiply by 100,000. When we do this, we get a number 4.5 million, or 4,500,000, and that is colony forming units per milliliter.